Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren Carson. My pronouns are she and her. I am the executive director and founder at Black Girl Smile, Inc. Hi, everybody. I'm Michael Michelle Longino. I'm a senior English major at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. I am so excited to be having this conversation with you today about mental health. Um, I feel like we don't have this conversation enough, so I can't wait to just dive right in. Well, we are super excited to have this conversation today, focusing on accessing mental health resources, specifically as Black women and girls. So, before we get started, do you mind sharing with me just a little bit about your personal mental health journey? Yeah, definitely. Um, growing up, I grew up in a predominantly white space. Um, I was pretty much used to always being the only one um, person of color, the only black woman in the room. And so I think um, it played a role on my anxiety and developing kind of a stress um, stressful coping mechanisms for being in spaces that aren't meant for me. Um, I had a loving family. I grew up in a loving home full of supportive people, but um, it was also pretty normal just to develop that strong Black women mentality and say, you know what, this is life, and you just kind of move on with the punches. So um, go, growing up and moving on to college, I discovered, wait, that's not always the case. <laughs> you know, I'm allowed to have feelings and um, express them to people and people do want to hear them. So the place that I'm in right now as a young Black woman is figuring out um, how to allow myself, one, to just feel, um, discover what mental health issues I'm going through, but also discovering how to find resources and um, get help. So that's a little bit about me, but I would love to hear more about your mental health journey and um, how you have developed these skills and gotten to this line of work. Yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I think your story resonates a lot with me um, and resonates, I, I would, I would uh, like to assume and guess with a lot of young Black women and girls. We were raised and are raised by strong Black women from our mothers to our grandmothers to our great grandmothers. Um, and there's ways that we can honor their experiences um, and the things that they've taught us, but also make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. Um, there's a way to navigate um, generationally and move to a place of generational healing. These are things that we can then pass along to the young people that interact with us. Um, so I think that, again, just really want to thank you for sharing your, your short story and experiences. Um, a little bit about my uh, mental health journey. I was diagnosed with clinical depression at the age of 15. Um, I found out mental health issues kind of ran in my family, but wasn't something that was readily discussed. Even though I come from a family of doctors and physicians, it wasn't something that uh, we as Black people kind of readily discuss. Um, went off to college, didn't really have a self-care plan, mental health resources in place, and really started to struggle with my mental health um, and had two experiences with um, suicide attempts. And after my second suicide attempt, as crazy as it sounds, I knew I wanted to live and to do so, I was really going to need to change things about the way I interacted with my mental health and well-being. Um, really started to put things in place um, accessing resources, so therapy, individual, group, um, but also uh, working on my coping skills and my self-care methods. Kind of to your point, um, we all experience stress and anxiety, and that's something that I think is really unique as Black women and girls, that we experience high levels of pressure, um, especially when it comes to academics or success, um, and we tend to want to take care of others before we take care of ourselves. Um, and for you to be mentally healthy and well, um, it's so true what they tell you on the airplane to put your mask on first. So I started to learn what it looked like to put my mask on first, to make sure my cup is filled so that I can help others. Um, and those are the things that really led me to wanting to start an organization, create a space where young black women and girls feel empowered to be educated about their mental health and well-being, but also to access resources so that we can make sure that we're mentally healthy and well. I think that's so awesome. And thank you for sharing that with me. Um, it's so important, like you said, to have spaces for us where we can just be ourselves and um, be authentic and express what we're feeling in the most genuine way possible. And I feel like that's something that I'm 
still searching for and looking for. Um, I love being a college student and having so much access to more information and mental health professionals, but sometimes it's really hard to know um, who to go to that actually resonates with my story and can um, not even just relate, but can allow me to have the space to exist as fully as I want to be. Um, so do you have any advice on finding those resources that are specific for you? Yeah. And I think that that's important. Um, it's one thing to go to therapy, um, but therapy is an experience and it's a journey and making sure that you find the right fit, uh, working with a provider that you feel comfortable opening up to, those, those, those little secrets or those things that are even hard for you to articulate or even think about, those are the things that you should be working on in therapy. Um, so a few suggestions on finding a therapist and then finding the right therapist. Um, today, uh, with the pandemic, this is actually one of the positives. Um, teletherapy has expanded significantly, meaning that if you live in a rural community, if you live in a community where there's not really providers that look like you, you can see any provider that's in your state. Um, even some states uh, allow you to see providers that are across state lines as well. Um, so highly encourage people, if you've ever thought about therapy, if you're thinking about therapy, this is the time, this is the time to access it. Um, a lot of providers are seeing people virtually, and there's a lot of low cost and even some free options out there, um, looking at something like Open Path Collective, where providers are offering on a sliding scale. So sessions are between $45 up to like $60. Also looking at organizations like Black Girl Smile, like the Loveland Foundation that offer therapy assistance programs where we'll actually cover the cost of you working with a therapist um, to start out um, if you have financial need. As I think both of us know, talking about mental health isn't really that normal in the Black community. I feel like we're moving in the right direction, um, but growing up, it just wasn't something that we did. So how do we figure out ways to continue this conversation going, but not even just within our community, but like our friendships? Because I know for me and my girlfriends, we talk to each other about everything. We will talk about our days, about school, about our problems, but you know, I would love to figure out ways to also make sure that the conversations are beneficial and not just trauma dumping on one another. Um, so when discovering that community, how can we um, figure out ways to help each other? Yeah, it, it's one, it's really important to have community to build a strong support network. Um, but we do want to recognize limitations. You want to recognize the limitations of others, but also recognizing your limitations. If you find that a friend or a loved one is experiencing something that is outside the, spo the scope of encouragement and supportive language and supportive actions, and they potentially need to work with a licensed mental health professional or see a provider that's a part of the medical community, I highly encourage you to suggest that. Um, there are tactful and sensitive ways to do that. Well, again, you wanna make sure you're recognizing your limitations also making sure that you're checking in with your friends. Uh, we all have a lot going on. Um, so making sure you maybe start a conversation with, um, do you have the time and space? Um, asking someone and creating that opportunity for them to set those boundaries and having some of those authentic conversations about boundary work and about you know things that uh, are off limits, things that are off limits in regards to communication topics, but it's really important to make sure that we start to deepen our relationships and that not, not that we're just asking for support, but we're also offering support as well. Because again, we all are experiencing a lot right now and we wanna make sure that our friends and our family members, our loved ones, that we can have uh, productive conversations with them if we, if we do need support. And the best way to do that is to make sure that they're in a good headspace, um, a good mental space, to actually have those conversations with us. So again, just making sure that you're checking in with your friends, um, having those authentic conversations, but setting boundaries when necessary. I love what you say about setting boundaries and like starting that conversation with, you know, are you in a space where I can share this with you? Um, because giving someone that opportunity to say yes or no is also, I feel like, um, giving them a chance to use self-care on themselves. Um, I never would have thought of it that way, but I feel like 
I'm, I'm always afraid to say no, or to say, you know, I don't want to talk right now, but I, I think I should also think about using that as a way to take better care of myself and my own mental health. So I love what you said about that. And I'm also curious if you could use, give us any specific resources um, for other girls like me who are just looking to learn more, maybe about Black Girl Smile, maybe about different resources online, um, just so we can continue having this conversation. Yeah, certainly. Um, and I think to your point, we want to make sure that we're really intentional about our mental health and well-being. Um, just like we go to the doctor, the dentist, um, to be preventative, to make sure everything's going well, um, to get tips and advice on ways that we can kind of improve. The same is true for your mental health and well-being. We want to make sure that we are acting in intentional ways, but also in preventative ways as well. So some of the resources that I would suggest um, for training. So if you want to learn more about mental health and well-being, um, things like youth mental health first aid, um, crisis intervention trainings, or even something like QPR, which is question persuade um, respond training can be really helpful just so you, you're prepared if you experience a mental health crisis or someone you know experiences a mental health crisis. Also accessing resources to find a licensed mental health professional, things like Open Path Collective or Psychology Today has amazing filtering options, especially if you have insurance, you can go on there and filter by your insurance, look for specifically African-American female providers, and even get down to their treatment modalities or issues that they specialize in. Also accessing resources like Therapy for Black Girls, awesome resource for um, female providers of color, um, looking at Loveland Foundation, Black Girl Smile, the Boris Henson Lawrence Foundation that has, um, has therapy assistant pro assistance programs if you're struggling with financial need to work with a licensed mental health professional. And then I would be remiss if I didn't mention some crisis resources. Um, if you are experiencing a mental health crisis, if you know someone who's experiencing a mental health crisis, highly encourage them to check out the National Suicide Prevention Hotline um, or the Crisis Text Line. And then lastly, take some time, take five minutes after this in between meetings, in between calls, just Google some resources that are in your area. You shouldn't be looking for crisis resources during a crisis. You should already know what is available in your area. So again, highly encourage everyone to just take a few minutes to know what resources are readily available for you within your community. That's awesome. And I feel like I definitely resonate with that because sometimes you're like, okay, wait, is this, is this a moment where I should be looking for help? Is this a moment where I can be looking for other resources? But also like not even questioning, just saying, you know what, let me just Google. Let me just go online and see what I can find out. And you learn so much. Um, so thank you so much for sharing those resources and having this conversation with me. Um, I feel like I've learned so much and I hope that everyone in the audience has also learned a lot too. So I really appreciate it and I can't wait to keep the conversation going.